have a pair of jeans that have some holes in the pockets. And this is from wearing like a wallet in the, the back pocket or using your phone a lot, like keeping it in the same spot. Um, it will get just wear, or you might even see like a shape of the item that you wear pretty consistently. So there are a few little holes here, the stitching's coming out, and then you see this little hole here. Now this side piece, we can fix this with a machine really quickly. This here, we're gonna need to do by hand. And that is because we wanna use this pocket. And that's okay, because I'll do it while I'm watching TV or I'm video chatting with someone. It's kind of like doodling. You don't really need to be doing anything like really beautiful. It's, it's fun and it can really add some personality. So I have made a patch from a scrap of denim that I have and I am basically going to be laying it on top and I just cut a little bit at a time all the way around and making it just the right size. So you wanna, you wanna cut a little bit, check it, cut it again because you want this to be bigger than the holes. Now, I didn't do multiple pieces because that's just gonna be a little bit harder to, to manage on the inside because we're gonna have to pin this from the outside. And by that, I mean we're sliding this piece of fabric inside. We're gonna lay it flat as we can and you can only really do it by feeling. It's hard to see. And then we're gonna be pinning it And it doesn't need to be perfect. This is really just to like get an idea of where it is and you can take this out and move it if you need to. Often the hardest part is keeping the patch in place when you're mending. So taking the time to pin it really makes a difference. You can use safety pins as well if you need to. You might poke yourself less. And next I'm gonna find some really cool thread that I wanna add. We're gonna do like a few holes and we're gonna redo this top stitching. A note about patches. So as you see here, I have two different patches of the same material. These, I use scraps of denim that I just keep and this one that I'm using for this project, it's cut with a little zigzag pattern. And that was done with a pair of pinking shears, like the color pink. This does a little serrated edge and it helps the fabric from fraying really quickly. And it may happen in the wash and over time, but it's gonna be a lot less messy than if you just cut it with a straight edge. Now this one, I searched, and that is just an overlocking machine. This is really common, like a t-shirt you might be wearing is probably made with an overlock machine. And by that, I just mean it's cutting, it's sewing at the same time, and it's keeping the edges from rolling. Not everybody has these machines. If you do have them, that's great. We do have one at Studio NPL, but it's not common for everyone to own one of these. And that is why the peaking shears are pretty awesome because they last a really long time and they don't cost very much. So keep that in mind.
finished mending for these jeans. So we added a patch inside this and we can trim this later. We can trim it a little bit closer to the stitches if we want to. And we have our hand stitches, we've got some zigzag stitches, and these are just a few of the methods you can use to mend things. Keep in mind, this is all about patience and choosing your own adventure. So taking the time to do this can really make a difference in your wardrobe and it'll give your clothes some personality that no one else will have on theirs. Keep that in mind. So next I'll have a few ideas of what I've done in the past in terms of repairs and mending that can hopefully get your imagination going and be creative. Have fun with it. Thanks y'all. The life of a groundhog baby starts underground in the burrow that the mother groundhog has dug. The burrow is also called a set and may be up to 80 feet long. A mother groundhog may have up to 10 babies, but the groundhog in this story had only six, which is the most common litter size. As the little groundhog pups grow, they slowly begin to leave the nest and explore for short periods. They are extremely alert 
and will dive back into the cave at their mother's warning, which is a sharp, high-pitched whistle. It is common to see them nearly motionless, standing erect on their hind feet watching for danger. The mother groundhog starts to move them out of her den, and before they are even two months old, the little groundhogs have dug their own burrows and started living alone. Hey guys, it's your Studio MPL Music Mentor, Red. Uh, we're gonna talk about looping on the electric guitar. Really, I'm just gonna demonstrate it real quick. Just gonna play some chords into the box, uh, record it with my foot, and play over that. That's good for practice. It helps you get flexible playing over like uh, something like an unfamiliar chord progression or whatever. I'm not gonna get into the theory about it. I'm just gonna do it. So the gray box is my looper. And that's all. I'm just going to play, play around a little bit, maybe build a couple layers, and I'll do it.
So basically, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, it'd be, it would have been a lot better time if I had a tempo uh, clipped up to it, but that's just, you know, it's just practice, and uh, I haven't really been doing too much of it, but it's wonderful practice. It really is a lot of fun, too. I mean, that's one progression. Anything you can make up and make go round and round and round into that box, it's like just to uh, have fun with it. But that works for any instrument, too. Any instrument that's electronically capable, you can go into that and just give yourself, uh, I don't know, it's like playing ping pong with half the table up. You just hit it back and forth. So, enjoy.
Spencer Kyries from the Kansas City Digital Media Lab in Kansas City, Missouri, shared the following video on using the in-browser program Sampulator to build Beats at home. Hi guys, my name is Kyries Devine and I am one of the lab facilitators at the Kansas City Digital Media Lab. Today I'll be showing you how to use an online beat making software called Sampulator.com. So the first thing you want to do is go to your web browser of choice and type in Sampulator.com and how you spell that is right here in the top left. You'll come to a screen that looks just like this, a bunch of squares and a bunch of different colors. Now don't get confused, don't get nervous, it's super easy to use. Now you don't need a MIDI keyboard to trigger these sounds, you just use your keyboard that is attached to your computer. So if we want to hear the clap, we just hit the one. <sighs> Snap is two, rim is three, and it goes all the way through the keyboard. So if we hit the one again, we get the clap, and if we come all the way down here to 805, to 8085, we hit the plus sign. If we want the hi-hat, we hit the Q. The next one is W, next one is E, next one is R. And it just goes through the entire keyboard just like that. The next thing you need to know is down here in your bottom right corner, which is your meters. So if you click on this, you'll have your BPM, which goes from 70 to 150, and any number in between. So I'm at the very lowest, I'm at 70, just because I prefer a slower kind of beat. Then you have your bars, and this is how many times your beat will loop. So you can go from two bars to 16 bars, and you have your meters down here, your time signatures. And then to your bottom left, you have the record button and the play button. You can hit shift to record and spacebar to hit play. So I've already laid down just some keys and some drums, just something little so you can hear something. So let's play that. So that's something that I've already laid down and now I'm going to add some guitars and some 808s just so you can see the recording process. One other thing that you should know about Sampulator is that it doesn't count you in. So if you're a regular in the lab, we use MPC, we use GarageBand, and even Soundation. And we know that when we hit record, it gives you a four count before it starts recording. Sampulator does not do that. As soon as you hit shift, it begins recording. And when you're recording, it'll show you through the grid all the way through here. So when you get to the end of your bar, you have to hit the space bar to stop the recording or it'll record over what you've just laid down. So let's go ahead and get into this recording. So I want to add some guitars and I kind of been playing with the sounds beforehand. So I think I want to lay down just that. All right, so to trigger these sounds, I'm just hitting J and K. So I'm going to record that in. And uh, I usually count off just to get my own timing. So one, two, three, four. Play it back. So this is what I just laid down, just soloing it so you can hear it. Cool. So let's lay down some 808s. So I think I want to lay that down. And just so you know, again, uh, I'm again just hitting 8081 is the number 8, 9, 0, minus I, plus sign. So you're still just using your keyboard. Super easy. So let's count this out. So 1, 2, 3, and... So let's play that back. So 
so now you can go through and start muting things that you don't necessarily like so i think those keys are a little loud so i would like to just keep that and i have an extra note in here so i'm gonna delete that just click on it and delete it So then you can go through and clean up and move, mute stuff, move notes to where you think they should be or how you would like them to be um, and just kind of clean it up. The only thing that you can't do is really mix in here. Um, and so that's just turning down each instrument. They're kind of already pre-mixed and you, you're just laying them down in the way that you want them. Uh, the other thing you can do is save your beat. So you just have to sign in with your Twitter account or an email and you are able to sample things and then you're able to go and listen to other beats that other people have made right here on Sampulator. So yeah guys, that is how you work Sampulator. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to hear your beats.